So, so, I broke it, I broke it, I broke it, I broke it. Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna fix it, fix it, fix it. Unhook it again. And hello. On today's adventure, it's going to be the odyssey of the oil change. I have a 2014 Ford Explorer. It turns out that this job is not going to be just the oil change. It's going to be a replacement of the oil pressure sending unit. But overall, these aren't really that hard of a job. There's no major disassembly required or anything like that. And one of the first things I would suggest is actually just have a good look around. Just get underneath or lift the hood or whatever you're going to do to kind of orient yourself and see what else might be wrong because you never know what else you might find now, now that you know there's a leak okay from where now with the extra distraction of the oil pressure sensor i thought i was trying to shoot some things and show you some things but i i maybe i probably didn't even turn the camera on i just completely forgot so some of this video is going to be me trying to puzzle it back together with some voiceovers. I have some lists on the screens and basically a recreation of the consternation for your edification. And I'm starting here with how to set up your truck so it can't fall over because okay. you're not lifting it and up. You want to be, so you, you want to set it up so that wherever you're going to be working on is, you know, close to where you're going to put your body. If you put the whole car way over here, what you want might be on top of the sidewalk, which means you're again not going to have the clearance. So you got to make sure you're positioned correctly according to that. But this way, if you don't have the ramps or lifts or jack or whatever, you can at least get an extra few inches out of this curb, whatever that is, before you even get started. Have a look underneath. Like, let's say you're going to do the oil change. Before you, you think, oh, I need oil, I need a few things, I need this and that, one socket, whatever it is. Look first. Because when you see stuff like this, that's the oil filter, that white can. But it's not supposed to have a drip of oil on it. So as soon as you see that, that means there's another problem. In this case, I did some research and apparently the oil sending unit is uh, often fails. And that's exactly what happened here. And you can see it's leaking oil. So that's what needs to be fixed. Luckily, I saw that first before I did anything. I just got under here and looked around. I wasn't even going to do the job. I was just going to see what I see. Where is the filter? Is in the front, in the back, you know, just basic stuff like that, just to give yourself some familiarity, and then you learn what questions to ask if you need, if there are any at all. So let's get started with all this. Luckily, it's all the same system, so I should be able to do the thing, to do it all at the same time. That's my hope, at least. This is a foam top. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to change the oil. You change the oil, obviously from where the oil cap is, that's your uh, dipstick there. And uh, you don't need to take off this foam cover, it's kind of an insulator I guess. It's filthy in, in my case, it's been around. But it's supposed to be attached to in a corner there, which is a clip, I'll show you in a second. It sort of looks like a rivet, but it's just a little push tab thing. It's kind of tucked underneath, it's kind of tucked underneath the edge of this. And then there's a thing here, which is missing. And it goes in that hole, the threaded hole over here, I believe. But it's not there. So somewhere at the last visit, I don't know. This vehicle has been to uh, the dealership a few times. No one thought to replace that <clears throat> because you know technically yes, it doesn't it doesn't need it. But that's one of the reasons you're doing your own oil change because you care about your car. They're just trying to get the job done and get as many as they can through the day. Not that they're doing a bad job, it's just not a thorough job in this case. If you notice that and they don't take it off, they don't, but they might not have noticed that though because you don't need to take this off to uh, do with the job. You would just like start unscrewing that and to the cap and underneath you're obviously taking off the nut and that's it. You don't have to take off this foam thing. But let me uh, take it off to show you something. Here. Pull it off of this. I don't know if I can do it with one hand. But you can kind of see it. It just sort of slips over. Remember, this is with one hand. It's not that hard if you do it by yourself. I mean, but you don't have to take a camera with it. So there it's off there. Now, we can try to uh, get it on this tab here. So you can bend this up out of the way. Now that it's off of the uh, little cap. 
and underneath here, you can squeeze the bottom where it flares out and push. And as you can see, it popped loose. So that came off surprisingly easy. Now there's supposed to be another one on the other side. And when I take this off, what do I find? Oh, isn't that interesting? Someone left a little uh, cotton house there for me. So this is probably rats collecting uh, lint and uh, making a nest. It's, it would be great if they didn't chew on everything and destroy it. Like, this looks like wiring that's exposed. I don't know if you can see that. So that's not good. And it makes sense because it's right where this rat nest is. So right, right now I'm going to try to tape it up temporarily, of course. And then uh, see what I can figure out. There's something here. It looks like some of the insulation might have been chewed on. But that's why you look. Now, like I said, you don't have to open this take this top off, not even the, with the extra oil pressure sending unit thing that I have to fix. Because you can't access it from the top anyway. There's no point in taking this off. So always look around. You see something wrong, look around some more. That leads you to another thing. So pretty soon you realize this is how these cars end up with like multiple, you know, all I wanted was an oil change or a tire rotation and next thing I know I'm paying for new brakes and blah blah blah. Yeah, because things are wearing out but no one's paying attention so it adds up. So here's my filter box, and this is where I uh, put the extra little piece, which I told you, you know, I had a look and I could see what I needed. This is the part number, kids, anyone's interested? Uh, what's, a, actually the thing is above the filter, so it's above this. And you can see how it runs all over the place, you know, the wind blows it everywhere kind of thing. This is a 15 millimeter. Oh, are we going on or off first of all? So now that I know I have at least one or two little extra jobs, back to the actual oil change. You're going to need six quarts, which is one five quart jug plus one extra little quart. And I'm using the 15 millimeter socket. The pan doesn't need to be there when you're breaking it loose. Wow, that's so tight. <laughs> I have a feeling somebody used a power machine here for this thing. The ratchet is fine here, and it's part of the problem is just that laying down, reaching up, you have almost no leverage. There it goes. Okay, so you only need to loosen it. You can unscrew this, and as long as you're pushing down, um, as you're unscrewing it, you're pushing it towards the... Uh, oil pan. So that's what I was going to show you. It, it doesn't leak. This is my hand now. Uh, it doesn't leak as long as you're pushing it. At least this one doesn't. You know, I can't guarantee every car doesn't do it. But th this one, this Ford Florida Explorer here, as long as I'm pushing this way, I'm pushing it towards the pan, it's not leaking. So you can get it quite a ways off before it starts to drip. So you can more confidently yank off that hot bolt and try to stay out of the way of the uh, hot oil. Which is another reason, by the way, I would suggest you uh, use gloves. If you do get the hot oil on you, you can peel the gloves off. And that's a big plus <laughs> with burning hot liquids. You can peel it off and now it's, it's on the glove, not on your skin. So once you get that bolt undone, you want to pour it into a pan. Now, my pan was almost exactly six quarts, which, although it sounds correct, is actually a little small because those plastic pans are strong enough, but not that strong. And when you fill it up with six quarts of thick, heavy oil, it almost feels like it wants to tip over and spill all the time. So I ended up buying a bigger pan later on for the next time round. And after that, you want to do your oil filter. That you should be able to just unscrew if it was not on too tight. Mine was fine. I was able to just unscrew it by hand. When you do unscrew those though, unscrew it a little bit, at least on this car where it's pointing down, 
and it'll until it starts to drain then stop and let it drain you don't have to catch it you don't have to try to stop it just let it drain down the side of the can and into your pan which is going to be underneath it right and once it stops dribbling then you can take off the rest of the way and it'll be a lot mess, less messy. Now that the oil pan's been drained and the filter's been removed, I'm looking for a deep socket. Looks like that's done dripping, that's nice. There, now I can see what the fuck's happening. Okay, so, by removing the uh, filter, that was like occupying this this space here by getting that out of the way now you can see the uh, white uh, back of the uh, sensor now there's a light in there and that's what i'm trying to take off what i decided to do is use this old craftsman socket it's a 13 sixteenths from the 60s, I guess. I don't know. It's this open, open end inside. So the entire component can fit inside. Let's see if we can record this whole event. Now, if you do this at home and you're not making a video, it won't be this fucking complicated. I think it's on there. No, there it goes. No, it's on there. So after breaking it loose with the ratchet, then I'd try to come back and get it off quicker with the speeder wrench. So actually with a long, the socket is there, on part, universal joint, and a very long extension actually. Brings it out to here, and we're gonna see if it works. Yep, it fucking works. Oh, it's off. That was that, just that fast. I don't know how I'm gonna get it out of here. <laughs> so this is the part. Oops, sorry. I'm dripping on my light. So this is the part. Looks like one pin in there. Let's look at the new one. They look the same. So, before I forget where it goes, let's put it in. I can start it by hand, so that's easier. Okay, got it on my hand, and now that purple, I mean that bluish tape it's sort of like a uh, Teflon uh, water proofing, what am I trying to say, so it doesn't leak type of thing, Teflon tape. So you can see the, uh, got it on there, finger tight, uh, eventually it runs into the blue Teflon tape there. So now I'm going to try to reattach it with the speeder wrench and socket setup I had. And we'll see if I can do it. Well, I'm sure I can do it. It's just uh, how long will it take? <laughs> with one hand, because the other camera died, the battery died. Okay, so this didn't work out too good. 
what I did learn is that I probably should have attached the socket or maybe the socket with the extension is fine directly to the part, to the oil pressure sensor without the speeder wrench. So I'm only working with two or three pieces with it attached to the speeder wrench like this and the angle and everything in the way and in between stuff, it just ended up not working out. Okay. But now I learned for next time and probably any future similar things. Got it on there. Now back to a normal oil change. You're going to want to put the filter and the oil drain plug back so, on. Um, when you put the new one on, everyone says add a little oil to the rim, to the, to the gasket. And also make sure there's no gasket up there already. Sometimes apparently these can stick, probably especially if it's been cranked on real tight in the first place by the previous person in other words and obviously you don't want to cross thread it but since everything's oily it you know should come apart and go together fairly easy once you break it loose um, so just make sure you're gentle there it goes. And you can see how easy it is it just spins on it's no big deal and then like the last guy who did it I'm just gonna do it hand tight so I don't need a wrench and uh, you know you don't need to crush anything. Once it, it's, it's snug, you know another quarter turn, eighth of a turn, should be plenty. And um, now you fill up the other end at the top. Be careful when you're dragging out your bucket of oil, of course. And on the uh tightening of this thing. All you want to do is make it nice and firm but not uh, crazy tight. Now because this is long it's harder to... it's hitting the exhaust pipe and the ground. So I shorten it up a little bit, and then I have more swing. Yep, my comes is snugging up. And I just want to get it good and snug, but not crazy, you know, I don't want to strip anything, and it's already not leaking, so that's all you really care about. The only reason to have this, th there's no load on this, so the only reason to have that extra tight is just so that it's not leaking. Once you're at that point, there's no point in keeping it, cranking it on there harder and harder and harder stripping out this thing now you gotta get a whole new one of these it's the forget about it it's just a waste of time and it's dumb and un and totally unnecessary so that's what i wanted to show you so now i did it and i can finish editing <laughs> good luck talk to you later so i just filled up uh, the five gallon now i got the one i mean five <laughs> quart and i'm doing the what's some of most of the uh, single quart to get to six is what the idea is. And um, luckily I have this gigantic funnel I found actually. Can you believe that? I just found it in the street. Um, so I'm gonna do about that much. I don't wanna overfill it. And I'm going to uh, test drive it tomorrow in the day. Once it's, everything settles. But the, the bo bottom is closed up. So now what I'm going to do is uh, empty out my uh, dirty pan into the big one to free this up. So and then that's put away. And unfortunately what happened was when I was trying to install that pressure sensor component, whatever thing, um, I broke it. It was going in at it's, it's such a difficult angle with all the different things going on i actually cracked the back off of it it was too much sharp of an angle or something but uh, i put the original one back on and in doing that i figured out what combination of tools was the correct tool so i'm going to use that to take it off and put it back on again tomorrow the new one i'm going to try to find another one tomorrow the first one it took like a day and a half to order it so if it takes a day and a half well it takes a day and a half but uh I'm going to try to get it done tomorrow. So I'll be setting this up again tomorrow, but just to take off the old one, put on the new one, and all the oils are going to be new. So that's that. 
So my uh, first lesson here at night, 9 30, 10 o'clock at night, is be careful, pay attention. And uh, for now, we're going to pour this back in here. So two days later, I got another oil pressure sending unit, and I'm going to install it now. I broke it. Now I'm going to fix it. I have to un unhook it again. You squeeze it. Pull it. Uh, the hardest part is getting the right angle. Here I'm showing you the Hazit extendable ratchet. It's attached to a universal joint and then to the deep 13 16 socket on top of the new oil pressure sending unit. one's not broken. So you just clip it on which is easy and you're done. Whew. Okay. But since I only have a little bit of oil left from the original uh, six quart supposedly took, I'm just gonna add the rest of it. Especially since I lost a little bit in the uh, in the uh, sensor part two, part number two. There's only a little bit left in here anyway. I'm trying to get insects in there. It probably won't help. Probably won't hurt either. Why bother? So aim it down here so you can see the pouring. Whee! Oh, it's look good. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, Good couple mouthfuls there. That'll probably do it. Uh, actually, there's there's oil in the uh, other pan. I got to dump into here. It's dirty oil. I'll do that. I can do that off camera. You don't have to see that, but uh, not yet. Almost. So let's. Uh, wind it up that's probably good enough put this on so that it's right side up after all that's done you turn on the car and it may have a message like this if you want to clear the message all you got to do is, is push ok on the menu here uh, but now that we've done the oil change we're going to uh, clear it so it never comes back so it press ok but you want to scroll back to the main menu okay this, this is where we were and now we're going to go back to this and then we go down arrow let me see if I can get them both in the same shot down arrow to settings press ok to go there um, we want to go to uh, vehicle which is it happens to be already there so I'm just arrowing down arrowing all the way down to the top vehicle now we're gonna go to oil life reset arrow down arrow down arrow down oil life reset and then say okay now life remaining zero because it was saying you need to do it so press and hold okay to reset as you can see here so I'm gonna press an okay like I've been doing and it's resetting it reset complete oil life set to 100 done now you can arrow back of course to uh, your main menus that you want to do I want to be on fuel economy it just happens to be the menu I like. And then you're done. If you did as good a job as me, it only took you three days and two different trips. Congratulations. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> right next to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. I almost had an accident myself. <laughs>